Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and today we're going to sow no fewer than five different biennials. It's June at the moment, the perfect time to get some cottage garden favourites into your garden for next year. So today we're going to sow some hollyhocks, foxgloves, sweet william, wallflowers and stock. So let's see how it's done. Today it's the end of June and we're going to sow some biennials. But before we start on that, I would like to welcome anybody who's new to the channel and to let you know that Gardening at Dwensa uploads twice a week. So on Sunday, I have a very short three minute or less video on how to, or maybe showcasing particular flowers. And then on Thursday, I upload a longer video like this one. Now today we're going to look at some fabulous biennials. I'm going to tell you why you will want to sow them and also how. Biennials, I suppose, are an unusual group of plants because they have a flowering cycle or a life cycle that's over two years. So the first year they grow roots and they grow to leaves. And then on the second year they flower and give your garden what it needs to look bright and beautiful. Then they die. There is also another group of plants that we treat as biennials. And these are ones that after the second year, they start to go downhill. Either they suffer from rust like hollyhocks do, or mildew as forget-me-nots do, or, and there are a couple of other ones. But these are ones that would have the same kind of cycles. So leaves and roots the first year, flowers the next year, and then it's best to just discard them. Now you may be asking why go to all that trouble? Why not just sow annuals and perennials? And the truth is that biennials do a fantastic job of filling in colour gaps in your garden. So from the point in time when the tulips and the other spring bulbs finish flowering to the point in time when your main perennial display kicks into bloom, there's a colour gap. And so many biennials are really useful at just bringing up the hype and adding a few more colours into the mix in your garden at that point in time. So that's why you will want to sow biennials. Also, a good number of them are beautifully scented and they just have such an old fashioned charm about them that, yeah. I absolutely love them. So what are we sowing today? Let me go and get my seeds. So first up on our hit list for today are some good old fashioned wallflowers. Now, if you are lucky enough to be able to buy bare root wallflowers in spring or in autumn, you will probably end up with mixed colors. So the thing about growing them from seed is that you can get single colors and I love deep, <laughs> vibrant colors like this dark orange one called Volcano. So uh, I will have lots and lots of dark orange in my borders, beautifully, beautifully scented. I have also got a second wallflower that I'm going to sow today. And this one, I guess you might have called the last one a dark red and this one an orange, but isn't that just gorgeous? And it reminds me of, I guess it reminds many of us of our childhood, that beautiful scent of wallflower wafting around the garden in spring, when you're just beginning to get used to the idea of the fact that there's a summer ahead and those the school holidays and days of freedom. So for that reason, I'm also going to be sowing Fire King, which is also scented. And they have really looked out for scented biennials this time round. Next up, we have Hollyhocks. And this one is a double, beautifully frilly. I believe a high proportion of the seeds come out as double. Unfortunately, mixed colours, which isn't my favourite. I'm not a big fan of mixed colours. But you know what? I just adored the look of these hollyhocks. Shorter than usual and just gorgeous. Next up, we have some sweet williams. So Dianthus barbarous is the definition of sweet william. And this is a variety called sooty which has tightly packed 
heads of very dark red flowers, almost black. Now, while this is sold as a biennial, I have had this plant in my garden for years. I grew it for years and years and it didn't deteriorate, came back and flowered every year. And I lost it, I think another bigger, larger plant muscled it out in the end. So I'm very anxious to get Sooty back in the garden and um, have her there for a longer time. Scented as well, very nice. Oh. And now we have stock. And this is a beautiful lavender colored stock scented. Of course, of course, of course. Again, I have found that stock can last for a long time in the garden. You don't feel the need to get rid of it immediately as you might with hollyhocks because of various rust problems that they might have. But just look at the gorgeous double flowers on this one. I just can't wait to have that there flowering and doing fantastically and I don't have a picture of it but I'm also going to sew foxgloves and the one I'm sewing is the white one with the fantastic dark colored throat called Pam's Choice. Now you have seen me grow and sew this plant before. And in fact, later on in the season, I will have a video all about how to collect foxglove seeds and how to sow them and how to deal with the plants. So that's something that's coming up later on. But the thing about foxglove Pam's choice in my garden is that because it's a biennial, it has like a cycle. So leaves one year, flowers the next. You harvest the seed, you sow the seed, leaves the next year, flowers the next. So there is a year, a gap year in between each where you have no flowers. And I decided to sow a second batch of seed so that going forward, I should have the flowers every year. So that's the plan. Let's get on with the sowing. Right, so I choose to sow my seeds here in the greenhouse because I have a greenhouse. You can sow the seed outdoors in situ in a weed free area that's raked to a fine tilth although you always lose a higher proportion of seed if you sow direct like that or you can sow them indoors but today we're going to do it in cells in the greenhouse and we'll start with this mix here you can use a purpose-bought seed mix but i'm going to mix my own and i'm using horticultural sand and peat free compost now the compost you use here shouldn't have any fertilizer in it because seeds certainly don't need fertilizer also if you've been having difficulty with peat free composts not being able to get ones that are sustaining your plants properly you don't need to worry about that with seeds especially when you're going to prick them on so you need very little to germinate seeds just a fine fine mix so i'm going to mix this around well i suppose i put in about a quarter of horticultural sand to three quarters of the compost Okay, now I intend sowing all of my seeds today in the one go, but it could be that you need to stagger yours. You can't get around to everything in the one day. So there is an order that you need to do things in and do sow your sweet williams first because they will just need that little bit longer. So I'm gonna remove the seed packet here and I have a seed tray here, which with individual cells, which I'm going to sow the seeds into so just take out some of the mix put it in like that and then just press down a little bit to make sure that you don't want the soil too compacted but you need it firm enough now you can see that some of these are dropping down a good bit when I firm them down with my two fingers so I will top up those with just a little bit of an extra mix Now, of course, you can soak the tray in water before you sow your seeds or you can do it afterwards. I am going to do it afterwards, as you can tell by the fact that I am opening up the seeds. And the good thing about these seeds is that you can actually see them. They're big enough to see, which is always an advantage <laughs> when sowing. 
empty them out into my very filthy hand here and so about three seeds per cell so one two three now the thing about growing from seed is that you will end up with lots do sow lots because you want to have color to play with next year in your garden extra plants that you can well you know you can swap with them with your friends and um, just dot them in any gaps and once your seeds are sown then top them with vermiculite now not all seeds need light to germinate foxgloves for example need light to germinate but the sweet william i don't think does however with vermiculite you don't need to worry about that because it's transparent so the light will get through so even if you're sowing foxgloves I suggest using the vermiculite on top. It's just a great thing to keep moisture in and stop moles and mosses and things growing. Now, once that's done, I will just press down very slightly to make sure that my seeds come into intimate contact with the soil. And after that's done, the next step is to water them. And here we have trays full of water. So I am just going to pop my Sweet Williams here into this tray of water and label it. The next one to sew is the foxglove, just to get it going nice and early. Then we move on to wallflowers. Now I'm sewing my second wallflower and this is the one called Fire King. Wherever I look on the internet at the moment, everybody seems to be talking and extolling the praises about Fire King. It's just such a good wallflower. Now this is an old and tried variety with striking orange flowers and a scent that wafts about beautifully. Supposedly the scent is stronger on a sunny day. The Flowers also make super cut flowers for the house. Now we're going to sow some hollyhocks, which are lovely and big. I think I'm only going to put maybe two per cell here. We'll see how they go. The package for this hollyhock says that it has the distinction of being the shortest in the Alcea rosea family. So Queenie is a dwarf hollyhock that reaches 60 centimeters that's about 24 inches and it's supposed to be quite perennial so it won't succumb to rust in the second or third year we shall see and finally we have the stock so this is one that's grown for the florist industry very tall scented stocks a beautiful lavender color they grow to 75 centimeters that's 30 inches would look fantastic as cut flowers in a vase but they would also look equally fantastic as flowers alive and doing well in my garden i will probably need to stake them but it's a small price to pay to have that fantastic lavender color in the garden next year okay let's sow these so now we're just having a look at the seeds and how their water absorption has done. And we can see with this one here that the vermiculite is actually darker on the top, indicating that it has absorbed water all the way up to the top. And just a little check in the tray. And actually there's a tiny little bit of water left down there, which we will now empty out. And then I will just place a lid on top this tray, on the other hand, still has dry patches here. And if I check down below, it has used up all of its water. So what I'm going to do here is just top up the water a bit and allow it to soak up a bit more. I leave these seedlings now in the greenhouse in a semi-shaded position, making sure it doesn't get too hot. And when germination occurs in a couple of weeks, I will then remove the lids like this one here, just to allow the seedlings to breathe, to get used to ambient temperatures and air circulation. And then they'll grow on into little plants, 
that will then need to be pricked out and potted into individual pots. This will happen in the space of a month or two. And then the advice for some of them, wallflowers for example, is that by October you plant them out in the garden, possibly in nursery beds where they can then be moved to their flowering position in spring. Here I don't have that kind of space. I don't have nursery beds to put wallflowers out in, but we will see if I can actually slot them into some of the borders. If not, they're going to have to stay in their pots in the greenhouse over winter. Now, by the magic of YouTube, we've skipped forward in time and most of my seeds have germinated. The hollyhocks and fire king wallflower took four days to germinate. The stock and Vulcan wallflower germinated the next day and the sweet williams germinated seven days after sowing. I've removed the lids but check my seedlings daily to make sure they remain just moist. And that kind of brings me to the end of this video on how and why to sow biennials. I hope you'll feel inspired to try out some of these varieties here. And uh, I think, you know, everything is worth the bother. That's the main thing I've learned with gardening. It's always good to try new things and you never know what delightful surprise is going to come your way. In the meantime, expect a how-to video from me on Sunday, just three minutes, and next Thursday, a proper full-length video like this one. Thanks for watching as always. Bye.